Okay, uh, name is Anthony Mangello. We're gonna do a quick retouch. Uh, another one. Uh, I guess the more you see of these, the maybe the more info and the more ideas you get. Um, if you've already watched one of this guy, don't, don't watch another one. I uh, wouldn't. There's not gonna be too much different from the last one. But you're more than welcome to uh, watch as much of uh, these uh, tutorials as you'd like. Um, uh, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start. Uh, please. Uh, I don't know, just comment if there's some part that's unclear, and I'll try and clear it up in, in future retouching examples. I'm going to go ahead and start. All right, first thing I do is I press a heart key that creates a new background layer and a new blank layer uh, that's in soft light blending mode. That's going to be used for dodge and burn. Later, this uh, is where I'm going to do all my adjustments on so I don't ruin the back uh, background layer. Um, uh, I always use a patch tool for doing most of my uh, repair work. I see some dirt. Uh, on the sensor up here in the background. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of all that. I cleaned my sensor today. I had no idea I had a bunch of dirt on it. It always sneaks up on you. Uh, people that aren't photographers, I uh, have no idea what I'm talking about. It's okay, there's just a bunch of specks on the screen and we're getting rid of them. Um, I'm gonna look for more dirt on uh, the other side. No, nope, looks like it was all in that region of the screen. Okay, we got rid of all the specs. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start doing the retouch on his face. Um, okay, I would be doing this faster if um, I'm recording this at like uh, really high resolution, so uh, slowing down my Photoshop. But uh, if I were to sell this, then we still have high, uh, high resolution copies. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'm just looking for uh, red dots. If you notice, I keep on going back and forth. That is just because you need to, when you're doing any kind of skin repair, look at what you've done from far away and up close to make sure that it looks good from both because it could look really good up close and look terrible far away or it could look really great far away and terrible up close. And both of those situations are no good. Uh, it's either going to print really crappy or um, look really bad online because uh, you know when you see it up close well when you see it up close and it looks bad it's going to print really crappy if you um see it far back and it looks uh bad then it's just not going to look good online or or printed <laughs> for that matter <laughs> so uh just yeah just always zoom back and forth to see what you've done and uh critique your own work and uh so i'm just uh here i'm just looking for uh any kind of uh blemish oops we missed him. Any kind of blemishes. If you're wondering how I get back and forth so fast, I am just using the mouse wheel and the alt button. Um, and, uh, and to make small adjustments, I am just pushing the space bar and then the hand tool comes up when you hold the space bar down. And that will bring you around your image really fast. So, um, you know, I do that to get around uh, places really fast and that way I don't waste time. Okay, so we want to pull back. We want to look for any blemishes. You know, I see some more specks on his cheek. I'm just going to get rid of those. Uh, I'm just using the patch tool here. I hope it's self-explanatory after seeing me do it about 50 times. Basically, I circle a spot that had uh, an area that I want erased, move it to an area that looks like um, is clean, and just let go of the mouse, and boom, it just makes it look like the area I've I've dragged it to. And uh, it should be pretty self-explanatory if it doesn't make sense. I had a roommate say that he tried it 70 times because he was doing it backwards. He wanted this area, he would circle a clear area and then try and circle this area <laughs> like that over and over and over again trying to make the blemishes go away. That's not how you do it. You circle the blemish and you move it to a clear area. That's pretty simple. Okay, cool. So now we got um, pretty smooth cheeks. You know, if you keep doing that and I keep on smoothing out everything, it is going to look really crappy. So just... Um, Try and uh, try not to overdo it. It's inevitable, I guess, if you're just starting to learn Photoshop, that you overdo it, overdo it on your own photos. If you're doing your own photos, um, it's okay. Just start over again. Uh, half an hour of your life was not wasted. It was um, used for learning purposes. <laughs> um, but start over and do it again. So um, it's not overdone, and you still look like a human being with pores and and skin and little hairs on your nose. Look at see little hairs and flakes and stuff on your nose. That's natural. You want all that stuff. Um, but any kind of red marks, uh, any kind of uh, blemish, you get rid of those. Those are temporary marks. And, uh, you know, 
Uh, they don't look good. Okay, cool. So I got rid of all the blemishes so far. Um, looking for random other stuff here. Some uh, little baby hairs we can get rid of pretty easily. So why not? And there's another baby hair here. We're just going to get rid of that. Okay, we're going to leave all these baby hairs in here because trying to get rid of those is just ridiculous. I don't know if you've ever tried here, but like I'll just show you really quick. Um, it leaves these dark marks. It looks like it's been photoshopped if you get around areas of high contrast with this tool. So I, I try and leave them alone. Um, we got a little speck in his hair here. I'm just going to drag this right along that line. Get rid of that speck. Here's another speck. This looks like a highlight on the hair. Get rid of it. Um, dark spots in the hair of this hair, hair of this color don't show up as much as uh, light spots. So we're just getting rid of light spots. Okay, so got rid of specks of hair. All that stuff uh, looks like there's some blemishes going on in this area. Luckily, it's out of focus. And it's going to be pretty easy to drag and drop to an area and be uh, completely covered up. And we got some blemishes on his neck. Let's get rid of those. Yuck. Icky blemishes on neck. Okay, cool. So it's starting to round up here where we're all done with this tool. All right, uh, next thing I'm going to do is we're going to whiten his eyes. It's gonna, oh, no, we're going to take the veins out of his eyes using the same tool, patch tool. Why not? Doesn't hurt. Leave a couple of veins in there just for uh, realism. Okay, cool. Now the veins are gone. Go ahead and whiten the eyes. All you have to do is grab this lasso tool um, and just select the eyes, the eye whites. I get I get nice and close. And uh, you know, if you over-select, you just use Alt and you can unselect. Now you just press Shift. You can add to that selection. You know, and you just hold Shift down again, and we're just adding each part, each eye white to the selection. And after all that's done. Um, all you have to do is go to um, select, modify, feather, uh, give it about a feather radius of 6. It's a 16 megapixel image. If it's a 10 megapixel image, maybe a feather radius of 5. You have 20 megapixels or more, maybe a feather radius of 7 or 8, something around those lines. Um, uh, okay, after you're done with that, we're just going to make uh, select. Uh, uh, actually layer, new adjustment layer, curves, um, it's going to be called curves one, fine, blue, let's go to the blue level, we're going to bring up the blue level, that is going to make his eyes kind of whiter but pinker, so all we have to do is take down the red level, and boom, his eyes start to become exactly like perfectly white eyes, and uh, just to show you, before, yellow, after, white, they have a green tint to them, but that just that's fine. It adds to the hazel, and after uh, if you didn't see the before and after, you wouldn't notice it at all. See, it looks nice and white from a distance. Great. That's done. His eyes are whitened. Um, actually, I'm going to make an adjustment over the whole image, a uh, curves adjustment over the whole image. And I'm just going to check what auto does really quick. Auto does something really interesting, but it's, uh, it's too much. Um, but I do like what it, what it did a little bit. I'm just going to bring down the blue and the green. A bit. Let's fine tune it so it doesn't look nuts. Uh, bring in that green over, and then I'm going to take the red down here and bring that back over. Bring put some red back into his skin. We're going to look at before and after, before and after, before and after. We've gotten a much clearer image on the after, I think, uh, for my taste. Some people actually like it before. I don't. Uh, I've shown people before and afters. We're going to put an S curve on top of all those uh, actual different adjustments that Photoshop helped me make with the auto command. Uh, just put an F S curve over the top. So we got a before, after, before, after. The after is much more clear, much more commercial looking. Uh, this is a theatrical headshot, but it's um, that's fine. It uh, doesn't look too commercial. And uh, maybe we can darken it just a little bit more. Get a more dramatic feel. Um, we want really dark right here in the shadows. Um, that's okay. I'm going to dodge and burn later, and we, we're going to be able to bring those back. So that's before, after, before, after.